Hi, I'm Paul Johnson, Solution Architect here at Matillion. In this video, we're going to look at a couple of ways to handle semi-structured data in Matillion. So let's get started. Before we jump in, we should consider what we mean by semi-structured data, and how is that different from structured data? We all know that a database contains tables, and the table metadata defines the structure of the data it contains through column names and data types, constraints, and so on. For data to fit into a table, it must adhere to the structure, and when it doesn't, we have to transform that data, using Matillion to make it fit. However, with data lakes and modern cloud data warehouses, we can store data in its native format without needing to transform it first. So when we refer to semi-structured data, we mean data that has a flexible schema as opposed to a rigid table-like structure. This type of data may contain things like arrays and nested elements. Common file types are JSON, Avro, and Parquet, where the structure and the data are contained in the same file. We sometimes call this a self-describing schema. Let's take a look at a couple of ways we can use Matillion with Snowflake and Amazon Redshift Spectrum to handle this semi-structured data. We will begin with Snowflake. Snowflake tables have a special data type called variant. This allows the use of SQL queries that access semi-structured data using special operators and functions. The first step is to create a table with a variant column and then load our semi-structured data from a file in our data lake. In this example, you can see I have selected the property strip outer array. This will remove the outer square brackets from the file so that each element in the array ends up as a new row in the variant column. Once it is loaded, we can use a Matillion component called the flatten variant to transform this data as if it were a table structure. This is useful when it comes to joining this data with other tables and also for visualization purposes. In this transformation example, we have a JSON file with three levels of nested arrays. I've put the data file on screen so you can pause the video if you want to take a closer look. But let's first sample the table input component to see if the data is loaded as we expected. So we can see that the table has three rows of data because each element in the outer array is treated as a row. This was thanks to the strip outer array setting in the previous step. Next, I've used the flatten variant component to map the properties within the JSON structure to the columns we want to create. The type in this screen is the new column type and the alias will be the name of the generated column. When we sample this component, we see the top level properties have had their values mapped to the new columns and the nested arrays retain their semi-structured format. To unnest these arrays, we use the column flattens property to make the properties accessible in the column mapping property we've already seen. Note that this time in the column mapping, we're using the alias defined in the column flatten as the source column. Now, when we sample the table, we can see the effect that unnesting the array has had on the number of records. Sometimes the structure can be unusual, and in this example, we have another nested array inside a struct that contains no other properties except for this array. So the syntax we need to traverse this structure is subtly different. This time in the column flattens property, we use the dot notation to step down to the next level inside the structure. Now when we do a sample, the entire document has been unnested into a tabular format. Matillion ETL for Amazon Redshift solves the problem of nested data in a different way with a nested data load component. This component takes an external table that contains a nested structure and converts it to a standard table, unpacking the nested structure into a more practical structure. The sample data is on screen again if you want to pause and have a closer look. In this scenario, our JSON data is in an S3 bucket in its native structure. The first step is to create an external table over this bucket location and define the nested structure. Once the structure has been defined, I can then load the data into an internal Amazon Redshift table using the nested data load component. We need to specify the input table name and the target table name and then decide which properties we want to load into the new table, or we can select all of them. There are options to conditionally load data based on a filter and to set the distribution style of the new tables, but we will keep the defaults for this example. 
Now when we run the job, we can see 41 records were written to the task history. And if we now sample the target table, we can see again that the file has been completely unnested into a table. Matillion provides data transformation for cloud data warehouses. So depending on which data warehouse you're using, Amazon Redshift or Snowflake, will determine which method from this video that you use. Matillion utilizes the unique features of those data warehouses to provide the most performant way for you to handle that semi-structured data. If you're interested in learning more about Matillion, then check out the ebook that's linked in the description of this video or visit matillion.com. Thank you.